Hey everyone, I'm Ten Tampa Bay Meteorologist Colleen Campbell, and today NOAA came out with their 2025 hurricane season outlook for the Atlantic Basin. Let's break down the numbers. So, starting off with the percentages, they are expecting a 60% above normal season. 30% near normal and 10% below normal. Now, the last time that we had a below normal season forecast, can you guess it? I'll step out of the way here. So there's a little quiz question for, for all of you getting this kicked off. It was 2015, so a decade ago. And I bring this up because everybody always says, well, every year they say it's going to be an above average season. Well, yeah, there is a couple of reasons for that. So let's go into the factors of why they are expecting an above normal season. So first of all, we have weaker wind shear that's being set up right now, warm sea surface temperatures, and an active West African monsoon season, which means more moisture being splashed our way off the coast of Africa. So all leads to how these storms develop, the structure of these tropical systems, how they stack up and stay together. Diving into it a little bit more, in April, we saw a transition from a La Nina phase into a neutral phase. So right now we're in that Enzo neutral phase and we're expected to stay that way through the season. Now you would think that that would be a good thing, but not necessarily because during La Nina phase, we have weaker wind shear over the Atlantic Basin. Now we don't want weaker wind shear because weaker wind shear means that these storms stay stacked, they keep their structure and they live on longer. Well, during a neutral phase, the same thing actually happens. And again, we are in that neutral phase right now. We had that transition from La Nina to neutral, kind of stopped right there, and it's expected to stay that way through the rest of the hurricane season. So that means weaker winds in the Atlantic Basin, and these storms will be able to keep their structure a little bit better. Now, sea surface temperatures, trade winds, and the West African monsoon season also play a role. We just went over that. And the El Nino phase, that often means a quieter season for the Atlantic Basin, but unfortunately, it looks like we will not have an El Nino phase setting up. So going into the sea surface temperatures, the main development region, which is the area that we typically look for these storms to start brewing, little seedlings, if you will, uh, and they're often called tropical waves. You may hear some talk about that. Right now, this main development region, the sea surface temperatures are cooler than this time last year, which seems like a good start, right? Well, not necessarily, because if you look at the Caribbean, the Gulf, the Western Atlantic, those temperatures are as warm or warmer than this time last year. So that's not good. So what that means is we could see more storms form closer to the coast as we get started into hurricane season. In fact, right now off our coast here in Tampa Bay, we have sea surface temperatures that are around 84 degrees. So that's running about five degrees at least above average. So you get the picture. All right, so getting into the outlook here. So this was just released today. Let's start off with the average numbers. So this is just taking the numbers over the years, how many storms we typically get. Name storms, this includes tropical storms themselves, uh, not just hurricanes, 14. Usually we have seven of those being hurricanes and then three of those being major hurricanes, category three or stronger. Getting into the May forecast through NOAA, they are forecasting a range, which they always do, 13 to 19 named storms, six to 10 of those being hurricanes and three to five of those being major hurricanes, category category three or stronger. All right, so going into the hurricane forecast with different organizations, there's several organizations, not just NOAA, that put these outlooks together. Actually, Colorado State is one of the first to do it, and I love the jokes that come out. Colorado State, you know, they're up in the Rockies. Why are they forecasting tropics? Well, they've been doing it for a very long time, and these are usually pretty spot on. So their forecast this year, pretty much in line with the rest of them, uh, again, here's the average numbers, and you can see everybody pretty much on board. Again, NOAA has a nice range. They always have a range going, and they were spot on last year, by the way. So comparing to NOAA, the other organizations that we have up here, 17 named storms out of those, 9 to 10 hurricanes, uh, 4 to 5 major hurricanes. So pretty much lining up with no what NOAA has as far as their range goes. Now, 2024, we had 18 named storms, 11 of those hurricanes, and 5 major hurricanes, two of which I'm sure you can remember their names, right? So 
we don't want to bring up their names. We'll just keep them in the past. All right, so the day of the first name storm. Let's look at last year. So we've been seeing these storms start earlier and earlier within the past uh, couple years. So this is going back to the last decade, 2015. You can see last year we had our first name storm, Alberto. Uh, June 19th in 2023, June 1st, right at the start of the season, 2022, June 5th. So again, we've had storms start early and earlier. 2016, we had a storm actually in January 12th. That is always possible if the water is warm enough and the elements are just right. As far as the tropics right now, here's the main development region that we often look at in the Atlantic Basin. No development is expected. Yes, there are a couple little seedlings trying to brew off the coast of Africa right now. Now we're keeping our eye on those, but nothing forming at this time. In the Pacific, you may notice that, yes, they do have a 50% probability of something developing there off the coast of Mexico within the next week. That has a 50% chance, but that's not coming our way. We're not worried about it this time. It's still a little baby system out there in the Pacific, and the Pacific has a little bit of a different timeline than we do in the Atlantic Basin. However, I will say that some of these storms, and we've seen this with storms in the past, can cross over into the Gulf However, that's just going into re, uh, past years, recent years. And again, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Nothing is expected at this time, and the Atlantic is quiet. Now, there's always time to prepare. Again, we're 10 days away from the start of hurricane season, June 1st, more than a week away. I would go out now, get your supplies, make sure your checklist is uh, all filled out, your family's on the same plan, everybody knows what's going on. So that way, when hurricane season does start and we start seeing these storms pop up, you are prepared, and I think we all learned a little lesson from last year, right? All right, so going over the names very quickly here, if you're curious about them, we have uh, Andrea all the way down to Wendy. See if there's any name on that list that you may recognize, any name that you're not looking forward to. Maybe it's an ex-girlfriend or boyfriend. Maybe it's somebody that you're very fond of. Who knows what it may be? We just know that we don't want any of these storms impacting our area. But remember, we want to leave you with this. It only takes one storm to have an impact. And no matter what the forecast is, uh, that's just a forecast, right? That doesn't determine how many land falling storms we will have. Some of those can form out in the Atlantic Basin. But as we learned last year, it only takes one storm to have a major impact on our area. And it's always better to be over prepared than under prepared. So that's the latest update from NOAA and the tropics here in your 10 Tampa Bay Weather Center. And we thank you for joining us on 10 Tampa Bay Plus.